Taskmaster. People often stop me in the street and say, taking part in this show looks so much fun, Greg. When are you going to do a version for non-celebrities? And I always give them the same response. I turn my head away and I immediately cross the road. <laughs> if they follow me, I contact the police and I fabricate a crime that results in bare minimum a suspended sentence. <laughs> now, let's meet the special people who are better than you and your silly families. They are... Alan Davis, <laughs> Desiree Birch, Gus Khan, Morgana Robinson, and Victoria Corrin Mitchell. And next to me, a man who is more than just a PA. He's a P-A-I-N. <laughs> and he's always got his hands down his P-A-N-T-S because he's got an R-A-S-H. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Desiree, Desiree snorted at that one. <laughs> when you mentioned the rash. She must know. She must know about your little pink blotches that you keep secret. <laughs> Always in spring, isn't it, that it appears? <laughs> the blotches? <laughs> yeah. Regular as clockwork. Oh, look. The snowdrops are just fading away. Yep. <laughs> right. On with the prize task. Got it. And this time you've asked them to bring in the most ridiculous thin thing. Now, I've seen some ridiculous thin things in my life and I'm about to see some more, so it's a great day for me. There are five points for the most ridiculous thin thing and all five of the ridiculous thin things will eventually go home with tonight's winner. It's great stuff. Desiree, what ridiculous thin thing will you present to me? They are these trunks that when you get them wet in the water, they sort of dissipate, they just come off of you. Dissolving pants. Yes. Oh, Desiree, here they are. They look like normal pants. Get them wet. Get them oh. wet. All apart. It's such a shame that you've introduced those on this show, because I genuinely would buy those for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love for your truth to be revealed to the public. A truth? Yeah. I've always called That's it my I truth. Call it no, I call it my truth as well. <laughs> so a strong opener, I would say. OK. That's right, a strong opener. All right. Morgana, dissolving pants? No, but I have brought with me today the most ridiculous thing, thing I could find, which is Vic Reeves' beard hair. Oh. And we can see it, I think, being plucked from the face of Vic Reeves. Take your pick. Go. Did you get it? Cool. Put it in. Look at that. Oh! OK. Wow. You're just in a pub there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just met up at co-op. The video was ridiculous. So what you ridic were wearing was ridiculous. Yeah. The concept's ridiculous. Is the hair ridiculous? <gasps> hmm. I was trying to start a heated debate, but no-one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Guz, Hi. can you beat your hair? Can you beat some dissolving pants? <sighs> Who knows? I actually think they're both very good, but I chose this in particular to please one person and one person only, and that is you. <gasps> Well so, done. Thank you. Have a look. Yeah, there it is. It's a picture of this person. Oh. Alex Horner's Where's Wally. Let me explain. If we weren't in a pandemic, I'm sure like, a, a genuinely plausible task of his might be to take us all to a very crowded place, <laughs> Alton Towers in the summer full of kids, all shitting all over the place, and he would say, in as quickly as you can, search for me. On well, school trips. <laughs> You've seen kids shitting themselves. One kid when we were in primary school on a log flume never lived it down. What was his name? Shitty Sajid. <laughs> I mean, he started saying the name before you'd even asked him for the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alan. I've brought in an LP, vinyl LP from the 1980s. That's thin. Uh, it's a time when I was a student. It's a time when Nelson Mandela was still in prison. The Berlin Wall was still up. Keep it light. <laughs> and I chose to buy in 1987, popped in, sold out by Wet, Wet, Wet. Here it is. <laughs> popped in, sold out, <laughs> Wet, Wet, Wet. <laughs> What's your favourite Wet 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 song, Alex? I liked it when they were Wet 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 Wet. You know they had five wets for a while? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they cut it down. <laughs> yeah. OK, Victoria. 
I have brought in something that I made. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at it. OK, here it is. There it is. <laughs> now... <laughs> Well you remember some time ago, I brought in the most elegant thing beginning with G, Greedy Esquire, but he's thin. Should we just have a look at him? Yes, we can see yeah, There we go. <laughs> you ridiculed him. I don't find him ridiculous. I don't think he's at all ridiculous, but you find him ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see you put me last now. Right. Very good. So, if you don't mind me saying, somewhat aggressively submitting <laughs> Mr Greedy Esquire again, does the most ridiculous thin thing, which I... I'm going to dot my invisible cap to her. Check, mate. Or doff it. Oh, yep. Good to Yeah, you. right, this is easy. Sorry, Guz. Where's Wally? It's not ridiculous enough for me. I genuinely would expect to see Alex wearing that outfit of his own volition. <laughs> <laughs> I feel mean about this, but a single hair on its own in isolation is not that ridiculous, even though Vic Reeves is one of the most ridiculous people there is. Two points to Morgana and her mouth is wide open. I'm not going to make the Wet 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 album the most ridiculous thing. It's undeniably thin, it's undeniably ridiculous, and there's a bit of quality on there as well. Three points to Alan. Four points to Desiree. And really, because I imagined them dissolving off you. Ah. Victoria, <laughs> with an absolute masterful hand by a poker professional. <laughs> she takes the five points yeah. with Mr. Yeah. Brady's five points to Victoria Paul. <laughs> All right, then, come on, let's see some action. Yes, and let's see a spot of DIY action. These look kind of like billiard balls, but not. Billiard balls? I guess, I don't even know um, what it is in this country, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Snooker, sorry, or snooker or snooker. Put up a shelf for all the Taskmaster's snooker balls, snooker, whatever. All the Taskmaster's snooker balls must be at the Taskmaster's eye line. Only the Taskmaster's snooker balls may be on the finished shelf. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. Put up a shelf. Yes, please. How tall is he? I'm not sure. He seems tall. Six foot. Six. I'm going to go and Google how, how tall he is. All right. Can I, have you got a phone? Yes. Can you Google for me? OK, tell me what to type in. How tall is Greg? <laughs> T how, how tall is... Greg? <laughs> Greg Davies. How are we spelling that? How tall is Greg from Taskmaster? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Morgana appears not to be 100% sure who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am now. Good. Yeah. Desiree says snooker. <laughs> not cooker. It's hard to know which British pronunciations of, you know, your language are the ones that you follow, because is it book, look, snook? Snooker's not a word. <laughs> in any, <laughs> Snicker? In, in any land. <laughs> OK. Snooker. What's first on our agenda? Move over, Handy Andy and Craig from Big Brother. Make way for Handy Morgandy and Victoria from Only Connect. Here we go. I don't... I'm... What... <sighs> you seem quite outraged. I don't know how you put up a shelf. A shelf? A shelf, please. Can I use a shelf that's already been made? Well, just move that. Me guys, Put that there. His eye line is going to be up there, isn't it? <laughs> the shelf is up. Nothing on there but the Taskmaster's balls. Shall I stop the clock? Stop. Thank you very much. Thanks, Victoria. Work. <laughs> ah! I think what we need is just a little bit of texture. Yeah. Okay, please. Oh, you're an asshole! <laughs> Way 
way round. Look at this! Oh -ha! I think this is going to be all right, you know. Yeah? If I don't hear anything drop, I reckon it means they've stayed up there. <sighs> Time stops. Is that it? I've stopped the clock. That'll do. Incredibly competent by Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, found some shelves. Put the snooker balls on the shelf. Now, the only thing I would notice is it's a good job you are as short as you are because in the opening seconds you would have chopped your own head off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was the closest we've come to a serious injury on the show. Morgana, similar technique. Find some shelves, bring them out, but then you added, smash the shelves to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you turned it upside down. You called it an arsehole. I should think it was a ball I was calling an arsehole. But ultimately, settled on the cushion system. Yes, and actually all that work did mean it was closer to your eye line, Greg. Yeah. Because Victoria's hey! was very quick. Oh. Victoria's was quick, but more sort of chin line. It was 71.5 centimetres. You are tall, aren't you? <laughs> Let's see how Alan and Desiree went about it. Here we go. What do I get to make the shelf out of? Whatever you want, Desiree. OK. Might need this. Have you got anything at six foot six tall? I'm six foot two. Put it on you. They're not going anywhere. Fastest wind. I know, I know. Come on. Six foot 180, right? OK. I mean, it's hard to believe that that's where his eyes are, but I think they probably are about there. This was the initial plan. Yeah. Sucker butt. OK. Are you still trying to say snooker ball? Yeah. <laughs> I think you could probably hang that up there. <laughs> There's a little gravity. I'm going to try and put it on something. It's a different strategy. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> oh, jeebus. I feel a shelf coming on. I can feel a shelf coming on. <laughs> OK. No one lost an eye. Do you want me to stop the clock? I think so. Doing this again? I think so. It's just the snooker balls and a little bit of soil on that shelf. So you want me to stop the clock? Yes, yes, I desperately want you to stop the clock. I stop the clock. <laughs> I like your shelf. <laughs> <laughs> what I love was the cock leg system. Yeah, it felt like um, this was cheating, but this was now in play. Did you forget where you'd put the table? <laughs> 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 I know that table's here somewhere. <laughs> I guess I'll have to estimate. <laughs> um, Alan, when you got the tray out, I thought, oh, OK, that's really clever, because the balls are contained. Of 100 ideas, that was the one good one. And then you attempted to turn it into some sort of cradle hanging <laughs> from the <laughs> fence. Then you just gave up and you just piled a load of rubbish up and stuck the balls on top. Yeah, it's getting dark. <laughs> I mean, Desiree's the only person who's entered into the spirit of this, really, in that she did attempt to build a shelf. No, I attempted to. <laughs> <laughs> who's left? It's just Guz Khan yes. left. Here we go. That's the cupboard door. What is the definition of a shelf? Definition of a shelf? Yeah. A flat length of wood or yeah. other rigid material attached to a wall or forming part of a piece of furniture that provides a surface for the storage or display of objects. <laughs> Technically, you said attached to a wall, right? Providing something is touching two surfaces. Technically, it's attached. It's quite a big shelf. You said a flat piece of wood, and you know what's going on above here? Flat piece of wood, that. <laughs> I'm just expecting more of a challenge to my Hey, I'm going to go here for you, bro. I believe that's what you call a shelf with all the Taskmaster snooker balls on. Stop the clock. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. You've got the definition of the shelf and you were happy with it. That was not just a door or a piece of wood. It had an accompanying rail of... You might call them coat hangers, yeah? But you can display any number of objects on those coat hangers, like pictures of your family and friends, 
G-strings, whatever you want. It's entirely up to you what you want to display up there. But of the many things you could display, <laughs> you went with pictures of your family and friends <laughs> or G-strings. <laughs> yeah, two sides of the pendulum minute, like, just wherever you want up there, right? Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, I believe there was a flat surface constructed of wood, which had all your balls very nicely displayed and was also completely attached to the fence. Mm. So that was the result of what we had. I mean, he's absolutely captivating, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> we, we, we all saw with our own eyes, he just leaned a couple of things up against the fence and balanced some balls on <laughs> well, Yeah, I'm totally drawn in by the man. <laughs> <laughs> so Desiree was the slowest, 19 minutes with the cock system. Morgana, 17 minutes. Alan, 13 minutes. Guz was seven minutes, but Victoria, just three minutes. Wow. Very speedy with her dragging the shelves. Yeah. But it was the lowest of the shelves, mm. the furthest from the eyes. Well, if you, if you penalise me for that, I, that's literally physical discrimination. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you going to change the points at all for uh, eye levelness? Give them the five to one point according to speed, but then right. I think we should score it again according to... Eyeline height. Eyeline height. Eyeline. Then I think we should divide the scores by two. So your eyeline is 76 inches. Yep. Desiree's was 77. Then we have Alan's at 77.5. Morgana's was 78 inches. Then Guz's was at 73 inches. Victoria's 71 and a half, so she would just get the one point there. So, these four people all get three points because Morgana's was rounded up from two and a half. Lovely. This guy, Alan Davies... Has... He just put, piled a load of rubbish against the fence. <laughs> he, got, he got three and a half points, but we're rounding it up to four points. He wins the task. Slash, <laughs> slash, <laughs> Four points. OK, get some scores. I do. It's an unfamiliar leaderboard because right at the top, with eight points, it's Victoria Corrin Mitchell. <laughs> Onwards. Onwards, and here's a catchy little task for you. Hello. Blue wounds. Right in form a 30 second jingle. You must reach into the barrel to find the subject of your jingle then pop a balloon to discover the instrument that you must play under your jingle. And spin. <laughs> you have 15 minutes. Your time starts as soon as you've chosen your subject and instrument. OK. Choices, there are choices. Shall I unwrap it? Do you know what that is, Alan? I don't, I don't know what it is. Printer of some sort? Nearly. Laminator. What is this? I still don't know what this is. Is this shrimp? Ah! <laughs> oh, shit out me. Snakes in a can? Just snakes in a can? Yeah, your jingle is about the snakes in a can. Victoria? Yes? Why are you putting them away? I don't know, really. For the, for the integrity of the product. OK. Oh! <laughs> Oh, right, I'm going to leave it there. What about right. the integrity of the product? Well, <laughs> never mind. It can just be like that. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> it's on a scroll, and on the scroll it says, Mini Drum Kit! A mini drum kit? That is exactly the kind of musical instrument that I would have wanted if I was doing this task. <sighs> A stylophone. That's a good instrument. If, if you know, if I could play. Swanee whistle. Swanee whistle. Ah, oh, have you played the swanee whistle before? Mm hmm I've got black belt. <laughs> 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 Lovely uh, differentiation between the laminator reactions. I thought. <laughs> Old Father Time didn't know what that fangled technology <laughs> was. Did <laughs> <laughs> didn't have the strength to pop a balloon. <laughs> Right. Mm. Shall we? OK, we have a good range of instruments and products. Before we see the fruits of their labour, here is an insight into everyone's jingle-making process. That's not a swanny whistle. Mm. Oh! OK, this is fun, OK. This... bro... this is... <laughs> this is not a swanny whistle. Oh, I'm thinking of a kazoo. How do you change the note? 
How do you write a jingle to drums? I am not Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah, I want him to do this thing. Yes. Can be a bit quicker? Sticks. Who needs sticks? Are you meant to change note by turning that? No. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. There's nowhere good to put a crab stick that doesn't sound foul. <laughs> I'll never better it. <laughs> Incredible. Guys, instantly I think yours is going to be the best. It was, that, that was a lot of fun, and I did end up buying it to take it home. It's broke now, but... It was <laughs> broke. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's jingles. Right. As you saw, they recorded their music first and then performed the jingle over the top, and the first one we're going to see is for Snakes in a Can, with a swanny whistle to add a touch of musicality, and it's Morgana's attempt. Snakes in the can. <coughs> snakes. <coughs> snakes in the can. <coughs> Gun. Snakes in the can. Snakes. <coughs> snakes in the can. Gun. <coughs> snakes. Snakes. Gun. Gun. <coughs> snakes in the can. <coughs> It was one fresh five, if you don't mind. <laughs> May I offer up a small criticism? Yeah. Would it... <laughs> <laughs> Would it be fair to say you may have taken the fun out of the product? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going for a sort of dirty, sort of Berlin vibe, you know. But that was so cool. Yeah. And I just don't see how it's going to accompany the product. This is where I have the natural advantage. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the aim was to make the jingle the best thing. It was to make people want the snakes in the can. Let's see what Victoria, a woman who seconds before this composition, didn't know what her instrument was. Yeah, same product, same musical instrument, different outcome. Do you know someone who likes a surprise? Buy them snakes in a can. See the joy in their eyes. You had a sunny background designed at great expense, no doubt, and the demeanour of a funeral director. <laughs> I it was quite smiley there. It's less joyful than, <laughs> do you know someone who's been injured in an industrial accident? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Need to kill someone. <laughs> that genuinely seems to me to be just jolly. Buy them snakes in a can. I mean, they can't do anything else after the accident. <laughs> Seeing what you're saying, I think that looks like a jolly person going, This is going to be fun at a thing. Right. There it is. Well, you keep telling yourself that while you <laughs> nurture your one point. <laughs> Next up, and trying to sell crab sticks with a drum kit, it's Desiree. <laughs> Did you wake up, Krabby? Who, me? Yes, you. Well, we woke up, Krabby. Let me tell you what to do. Put a crab stick in your face. We got all the crabs in the same place. It'll rid you of all your acne and your flap. The only thing I can't do is be a real crab. Don't ask it to. Bang it, Ma. Bang it, dude. How else are you going to sell crab stick? It's not even real crab. Now, that's a jingle. <laughs> that's a jingle. <laughs> oh, I can see that was better than mine. <laughs> she said the contestants chose what they wanted behind them on the green screen. So the skateboarding grandmother, that was all Desiree's inspiration. Yes, as a child of the 90s, every commercial had a skateboarding grandma eating a taco or a Twinkie or something, just like super into it. So the kids know, even grandma thinks it's cool, so we better get in on this. Right. <laughs> Let's see some more. OK, next up, it's Alan, accompanied by Stylophone. Yeah. And this is a big one because we all know the Taskmaster <laughs> loves his laminators. Yeah. Imagine a world without lamination. Laminate, laminate, just in case you spill. Laminate, laminate, on your granddad's will. You've got a very specific audience. 
be a nice thing that uh, to have playing on a loop outside funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> During the reading of a will. <laughs> <laughs> really good, Alan. <laughs> Finally. Finally, someone else is going to try to sell you a laminator, this time with drums and me. It's Guz. Ah. 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 Guzzy Bear exclusive. These man here, they want a jingle. But you see me, blood. I wanna eat Pringles. Pringles? Man and man was single. Single? Free to mingle. Mingle. Back then my ting used to go tingle. 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 But now, I'm like a laminator. <laughs> but I was blocked constipator. I'm done with my bath. Ta-ta, see you later. Ta-ta, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Well, A, you should never use Alex. He destroyed the urban vibe instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to drill down into the narrative, if I may, a little. As far as I could tell, you initially reminisced about your life as a single man. Yes. <laughs> During which period your penis... <laughs> your penis regularly tingles. <laughs> Yeah, he was eating a lot of Pringles. He was, he was eating Pringles, he was mingling, and his penis was tingling. Yeah. And then... <laughs> he laminated his penis. <laughs> 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 this is what I got. Would have, been, would have been a good health and safety thing, perhaps. <laughs> but, but in fact, no, when it comes to the laminator, right at the end of the jingle, Gus simply rhymed the word laminator with constipator. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of them. It, it, it was a. It was, it was one of them. But it, it was a subtle. It was a subtle, just a subtle product placement. Also, you were playing the drums for 14 minutes and then wrote it for one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Greg. We need to mark these jingles. I don't think I should give anyone one point. Mm -hmm. Okay. I should give Victoria two. <laughs> she should thank me for both of them. I have. We're going to say zero. <laughs> OK, so two to Victoria. I really loved Guz and Alan. I'm not convinced that, that they've reached as broader audience as they might have. I have to put a golf between theirs and Victoria. I'm going to give them both Are four you points. <laughs> You think there was more joy in Alan's discussion of laminating your granddad's will <laughs> than in my joyful snake exploding out of a can, Alex <laughs> laughing? I think that's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lamination Brothers get four points each. That's right. I'm right. going to give Desiree and Morgana a sweet five points each because they both made me want to rush out and buy their products. There we go. <laughs> five points to Desiree and Morgana. So. What's the last task today, please, Alex? Well, the last task involves a fiendish dilemma, Greg, and a big old pipe. Ow. <laughs> Tube in a box. Yes. Either get the pipe through the box and everything in it. <laughs> then get the box and everything in it through the pipe. Or get the box and everything in it through the pipe, then get the pipe through the box and everything in it. Get the pipe through the box and everything in it, then get the box and everything in it through the pipe. Or get the box and everything in it through the pipe, then get the pipe th <laughs> through the box and everything in it. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. <laughs> Do you want to talk us through it then? Since, I think uh... Desiree's talked us through it enough, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Made it very clear what the rules were. Well, it was a rough day. You're shoving everything through a thing and you're shoving the thing through everything else. Here's what Alan, Desiree <laughs> and Morgana did. Huh? Oh, you fuckers. <laughs> Shove the pipe through this. You're already tights. Just remain tights. Cool. Okay. So, bing bong bing. It gets harder the smaller it gets. <laughs> I've got to get that actually through. Everything's through the pipe. Get the 
box and everything in it through the pipe. It doesn't have to be in the box. These are definitely footed tights. Yeah, that's where they like to chair. <laughs> I'll just have to get a poker. Why might that? How am I going to get this through this pipe? Dramatically reduce it in size with a bit of rubber action. Around? Is that through, or do I need to adhere these sides now? I think that's good. <laughs> Through. Once I begin the great push, you know. Oh no, I've got a blockage. This would be a good thing to to assist in the great push. <laughs> the carpool juice that. Well, we haven't had the great push yet, have we? Uh, that, that was part of the great push. Oh, it's always the sponge. Oh, look at that. Damn. What a relief. Stop the clock. I've stopped it. <laughs> oh, well, I'd be amazed if anyone was slower than that. <laughs> Good. What I was most delighted by is you've already brought the world snooker, you've already brought the world Jeebus, <laughs> and now a new catchphrase was born. You probably don't even remember it, but I noted it. Bing, bong, bing. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a perfect attempt at the task. You did it quickly as well. 10.15. Wow. All right. Morgana. It seemed to me that your professional put things through a pipe and then put the pipe through things. I like a good prod. There was even one point where you went, oh, no, I've got a blockage, and I thought, oh, good, things have gone wrong for Morgana on this thing that she's clearly done before, and you went, it's always the sponge. <laughs> <laughs> she was 12 minutes 48, so just a couple of minutes slower than Desiree, but still speedy. By great contrast, mm. Alan very slowly put all of the things at once into a pipe. <laughs> and then made multiple references to the great push. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you said it, I thought of, of the Great Leap Forward, where <laughs> communism was introduced across China and famously. resulted in, famously, in millions and millions of deaths. But I was listening to Wet, Wet, Wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, before that, you were meant to get the pipe through the box and everything in it. Yeah. He just put everything in the box and then just put the pipe through the box. Right. So he didn't really do the things we wanted him to do. So the Great Push is one of the most incompetent movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. There are still two people left trying to get the pipe through the box and everything in it, then the box and everything in it through the pipe. Or the box and everything in it through the pipe, then the pipe through the box and everything in it. Here's the last two, Victoria and Guz. Wait, the box and everything in it through the pipe. That's got to happen first. Oh. Look for a stick. What's this? Okay. It's too short. I'm very resourceful when I'm allowed to leave the table. I'm allowed to leave the table. All the information is on the task. Work on it. Okay. Wooden cutlery is what you have in this place. Right. Of course, this is not going to go because the six's too short. Found a spear, brother. Found a spear. <laughs> it's gonna come out, you little shit. Have you finished? Yeah. yeah I've... And then get the pipe through the box. <laughs> OK, I've got a longer stick, a tape measure, and a snack to reward myself in case I get it right. I'm going to use the orange for leverage. Come on, there we go. Lovely. There. I wanted to confidently say I completed my task, but I'm not confident about it. Uh, and now it's got to go through everything. This is just for safety purposes. <laughs> I think technically I've finished now. Shall I stop the floor? Please, yeah. Are you finding this erotic? Yes. Pants. OK. Done. No, box, no! Oh, I'll start the clock again. I'll stop the clock again. Bye, guys. There. Done. Stop, stop the clock. Yes. Wow! Mm. I don't think Gus ever knew if he had completed the task <laughs> or not. Or it never matters for Gus, though. <laughs> because uh, the flair of the man suggests 
it's all gone perfectly to plan. <laughs> and the audacity of the, I'm going to call it the bazooka move, <laughs> that you introduced halfway through, mm. was absolutely poetry. Yeah. You know, on, on a drive home, the wording for this task kept going through my head. Mm. <laughs> and I don't know how you feel, Victoria, but I felt like I needed some kind of assessment. I was on the phone to old colleagues like, yo, man, I've got something <laughs> wrong with me. Can you send me for an assessment? And they were like, you've got, <laughs> you got plenty wrong with you, mate. It was a really stressful time for me. It shows really messed with my life. I just want to say Yeah. <laughs> Victoria. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was excellent. <laughs> All right, I have got a couple of questions. <laughs> Why did you attach a small fork to the end of the pokey stick? Because the stick was too short to push the things through the pipe, so it needed an extension. And she did use it to slice up the sponge as well. Uh, so yes, I sliced up the sponge. Very resourceful. Oh. Yes. So she used the tools. She used her little wooden fork. She popped it on the end, mm -hmm. and most delightfully of all, she brought herself a snack to reward herself. <laughs> It's often like watching a famous five story with Victoria. <laughs> well done. A... Have you put a rat in my dressing room? <laughs> <laughs> what about some timing? Yeah, well, Gaz and Alan don't get any points. Victoria gets three for her 19 minutes, 16 seconds. Morgana, four, 12 minutes, 48. But five points to Desiree with 10 minutes, 15. There it is. Yeah. Well done, mate. Let's have a quick look at the scores. In this episode, Victoria still got a chance of winning. She's on 13, but Desiree's out in front with 17 points. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time for you all to head to the stage, please, for the final task of the show. <laughs> hello, one and all, and hello, you. Would you like Victoria Corrin Mitchell to read the task? Perfect. <laughs> Each person must direct their fellow contestants to draw an image. The drawing director may only use the following words. Line, circle, square, big, small, up, down, left, right, middle, please, bendy. <laughs> At the end of one minute, the drawers must write down what they think the image is. The drawers will receive one point per correct guess. The drawing director will also receive one point per correct guess. Most points overall wins. In each of your folders, you'll find an image. That's what you're going to be directing the others to draw. You're not asked to do any acting or miming or saying any other words or noises. OK, so, Alan, please look inside your folder. Mm-hmm. Your minute to direct the other drawers starts... Line, bendy. Line, bendy. Left, up. No actions, please, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Middle, line. Still doing the actions. Be be <laughs> bendy, up, left, up, right. <laughs> bendy, up, left. Bendy up right. Desiree, please show Greg. Uh, what I think I've drawn is the uh, sweaty right boob. A sweaty right <laughs> boob. <laughs> Very specific. Gus, what did Alan tell you to draw? Part of a colon. <laughs> right, that's what I think. <laughs> well, Donna, what did Alan tell you to draw? I've gone for a cheeky vase. Beautiful vase. And then finally, Victoria. I've got a witch's nose and teeth. A lovely witch's. <laughs> Alan, do you want to reveal your picture? My... Oh, a banana! It was a banana! Aww. What a colossal failure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not easy, this. You're not going to get any points for hilarious things about body parts. <laughs> <laughs> Desiree, your minute starts... Left line. Down line. Right line. Middle line. Down bendy circle. Ah, the classic. <laughs> Middle square. Uh, right line, left line. Right line, left line. Uh, left square, right square. Alan, what did Desiree want you to draw? A car. Beautiful, beautiful car. Guys, what did you draw? <laughs> Look, man, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, an angry water cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cute, though. Well, Guys, what did you draw? Well, I thought it sounded like an aeroplane meal. Like a little bit of chicken and a tiny bit of cheese, maybe, mm -hmm. in a bun or something. <laughs> and finally... I've got a winking man. A oh, winking yeah. man. Yeah, Lovely right. winking Art man. Nouveau. Oh, yeah. beautiful Very winking cool. man. That's right. <laughs> My image was, in fact, a castle. <laughs> That's so difficult. That's With those... so hard. Guys, your minute starts... 
let's uh, start with a Just line. Just the words, please. Huh? Just the words on the list. Oh, you yeah, bastard. OK. <laughs> line. I like it. Just down, down line. Keep saying just. Uh, middle. Lovely. Bendy. Middle bendy. Line. Circle square. <laughs> Big. Down left right. <laughs> Why don't you do the circle there? <laughs> Up. Please. Down bendy right. Up bendy right. Woo! <laughs> line. Middle. Bendy circle please. <laughs> My main thing is, did you all have fun doing that? Ah! Yes. Alan Davies, what did Gaz Khan make you draw? It's like a, one of those Henry Hoover things. Yeah. OK. Uh, Desiree, what have you got? I think it was the map of a mini golf course. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Morgana, what have you drawn? I think my money's on a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and Victoria? I've gone with fruit. <laughs> Do you want to know what I got it as? Yes, please, Greg. I got it as an evil clown's face. Ooh. You would have got a point, mate. It's Greg Davies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice this. <laughs> Hello, Morgana. Oh, yeah. Your minute starts. Line. Line. <laughs> Line. 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 Left. Down, right, up. Middle, please. Mm. But I think I'm done. <laughs> Alan, what have you drawn? It's uh, a fence. <laughs> or it's a ladder. Desiree, <laughs> <laughs> right, what have you drawn? Uh, I've drawn <laughs> a train track that ends in a brick wall. <laughs> Guys? Uh, I'm just writing messages to my friends now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Victoria. I've got Lisa Simpson. Ah. Wowie. And they were supposed to draw. It's actually a harp, guys. Alan's was nearly a harp in a way. It's no closer to mm. a harp than Big Up Golf from the West Midlands Massive. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, you have one minute. Middle, big circle. Lovely. Left, up, line left. Line left, left, line left, line left. Very calm. Right, line right, line right, line right, line right. Alan, what did Victoria make you draw? I added the face. Yeah. It's a spider. OK, what have you drawn, Desiree? I can only guess it is a close-up of a cat nose. It's both quite similar. <laughs> Gus, what have you drawn? I think Vic was describing um, shitty Sag from earlier on. <laughs> and the thing I remember about Saj, when he shit himself in a log flume, he was smiling. <laughs> Quite a bit of grimace. <laughs> well, God, what have you drawn? Well, I think it's a shark with a massive ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria. He was supposed to draw... <gasps> a spider! A sp oh, my God! One point to Alan and one point to Victoria. Wow. Well done, Alan. Which means that they come joint first in the task. Hey, come down. We'll add that to the final scores. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Well, obviously, Victoria and Alan were so much better at drawing and directing the drawing than anyone else. They won the task. They get five points each. No-one else gets any points, cos oh. they didn't do anything right. But that was so sick, we should run. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It means it's the closest series in Taskmaster history. Three of them are on 110 points. That's Desiree, Gaz and Alan. Victoria's on 91, and Morgana's on 113, just three points away from the others. However, thanks to those five points, this episode was won by... Victoria Corrin Mitchell! Yeah. 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 Victoria Corrin Mitchell wins! Please, go fill in for your thin things! So what have we learned today? We've learned if you ever find yourself stateside in LA, you should make an effort by learning a few colloquialisms. Why not walk into a bar and shout, Jeebus, guys! Anyone fancy a game of snooker? And a few jars of Bing Bong Bing! <laughs> Goodbye, my friends. <laughs> See you very soon. For now, here's tonight's winner once more, Victoria Curran Mitchell! <laughs>
for more Taskmaster, subscribe now.